welcome to unit 10 ecology and environmental biology and this is the first lecture of uh, unit 10 unit 10 concludes with two different lecture this is the very first lecture and uh, unit 10 is a huge unit actually it's a big syllabus so in in, in lecture 1 we are going to talk about ecosystem ecology we'll talk about the components of ecosystem uh, different ecological law okay which is not written here we'll also talk about the energy flow and ecological pyramids those things then we'll talk about the population ecology the population growth logistic growth uh, okay uh, so exponential growth all this uh, then we'll start solving some math problems from population ecology as well if time permits we'll also talk about pollution especially the greenhouse gas the greenhouse effect global warming all these regions as well as uh, some some diseases associated with uh, the heavy metal poisoning toxicity and related to global warming okay and the uh, numbers written after every single sub topic name represents the total number of approximate questions that we are going to expect from this sub topic in csr net exam let's move so when i uh, first start to talk about the ecosystem uh, we need to understand for some terminologies like ecology what is it as you know by definition habitat is a place where an organism lives so if you live there that's your habitat if a tiger lives in a forest that's it its habitat and if you think about a bacteria living in a tissue that its micro habitat for the bacteria population all the organisms within an area belonging to the same species are termed as the population the idea of population and the concept of species forming population population forming communities will become more clear when we start to talk about the community ecology and population ecology and this thing will become even more more clear in the unit number 11 when we talk about the evolution talking about species and how they develop and how they origin how they evolve now the third uh, thing here is and what's going on there let me okay so now community what is community all various populations interacting at the same local means you know all the populations together that are living in the same area and they are linked with one another they are uh, you know one population influences the growth uh, of the other population that is known as a community that means all the population members together will be termed as a community and then ecosystem a collection of all these communities together is known as an ecosystem so if you think about the whole ecosystem it's like a hierarchy you know an organizational hierarchy and you can see the hierarchy from beginning and the easy way to remember the hierarchy is with the term bobek o when you say b o b e c p o o is not required actually but let rest of the others continue with uh, the hierarchy of the ecosystem why i i mentioned bobek o let's look at it it start with uh, the individual like a single individual organism now many of that single individual organism together of the same species form a population so if you think about a cat all the cat of that uh, same species together is a population now many such different population of species together will be termed as a community so a cat a dog a birds all these things together acting as a community now all the communities together form ecosystem all the ecosystems around the globe together form biome and all the biomes connected together is the biosphere where we see the presence of living organism in this solar system so why i say bobek po because we begin with uh, the b b for biosphere then the second b is for biome then the e for is ecosystem the c for community p for population o for organism uh, so bobek po is a easy way to remember the hierarchy from the maximum level to the minimum level that is from the biosphere till the organism level of ecosystem now another thing that we need to talk about is how this ecosystem actually functions there are few properties of ecosystem that you always remember and one of the major properties that in ecosystem every single individual is connected every single organisms are connected means a cat a dog a bird which is flying a, a tree 
everything in that ecosystem are actually connected. That means if anything happens to one of the species, that's going to lead to some sort of impact on the other uh, species of the ecosystem. Earlier, we didn't have this idea. That's why, you know, people start hunting and doing all the stuff. But now we know that hunting tigers in some distant place can lead to severe effect in our ecosystem. And if ecosystem falls, then obviously there is no, no room for us humans to survive because human is nothing but a part of this ecosystem. So we are as a, working as a unit. It's not separate, it's a unit. So when I talk about ecosystem, there are two components of the ecosystem always present side by side. One is the biotic factor of the ecosystem, another one is the abiotic factor of the ecosystem. The abiotic factor contains the like air, water, soil, sunlight, temperature, anything which is not living, okay, non-living things. And then biotic factor is the thing which are living things, you know, like plants, like animals, like decomposers. Now you can see among these three, these three biotic factors have separate roles to play. For example, plants have a role of producers, means they are producing things. They are the producer. They produce food for anyone. They produce food for the animals, decomposer, everything. Now the animals uh, eat that food and survive. So animals can be even further classified into three types. Primary consumer, secondary consumer and tertiary consumer. So the primary consumer is the one who directly eats the producer. The secondary consumer is the one who eats the primary consumer. And the tertiary consumer is the one who eats the secondary consumer. And the last thing, decomposers. Decomposers are the third unit of the animal's uh, side. Uh, living, uh, not animals. You can see the living or biotic factors. But the decomposer's role is to take back anything which is present in animals or plants and turn it back to the environment, transfer it back to the environment because we know uh, all of us like plants or animals, everything that we have in our body, everything like if you look at the miniature level like a cell, uh, the cell is made up with lipids, fats, uh, you know, uh, proteins, carbohydrates, all these things which are literally present in the abiotic thing. So literally if you look at a rock and if you look at human, the unit which build up a rock and a human is the same. They carry iron, they carry all the other salts. Our body also needs the salts to survive. Now the thing is, the way they are arranged, the, the, way, the way they are utilized is different for these two different things. So what decomposers do is after the death of the plants and animals, uh, they transfer all this material into the environment and complete the process, the cycle. And we know in, in, in this environment, there are always cycles known as biogeographical cycles or biogeological cycles uh, that includes, uh, you know, phosphorus cycle, nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, uh, sulfur cycle, like that. So in the abiotic factors can further can be grouped into climatic factor, edaphic factor and physiographical factors. Climatic factor includes temperature, water content in the air, light and gases that are present in the air, like, you know, uh, the gaseous content in the air, how, what percentage of CO2, what percentage of nitrogen, oxygen which is present in the environment or air. Edaphic factors means of anything related to soil, like soil types, uh, the nature of the soil, the pH of the soil and how much nutrient rich the soil is, which is known as the humus content of the soil. And the third thing, physiographical factors means the aspect that is the position of an area in relation to the sunlight. That means, uh, you know, different altitude variations. And depending upon the different altitude variations and slopes, they receive sunlight in a different way. And we know sun is the key factor here because sun is the prime source of energy to run this ecosystem. So you can think about this ecosystem as an organization and you need some funding to run it. The funding, in this case, the energy currency comes from the sun because sun provides the sole energy source uh, that is received and captured by the producers to produce the food and the consumers then eat that food uh, to survive. And then at the end, decomposers take out all their body components and then transfer it back to the environment so that uh, those nutrients and materials can be recycled uh, so that that can be utilized by the other organisms. And that's the reason we're sustaining life for so long in this planet even though we are constantly taking nutrients from the environment, but still we are sustaining life because life is, whatever thing life takes from the environment, it releases it back, it provides it back to the environment at the end, at the time of its death. That's why death is so necessary for life because without death, the life's continuity is not possible. Now, to talk about uh, the CSI net perspective, because you know we are not going to talk about very basic things which 
which is asked generally from unit 10 the questions they ask is far easier you know with the help of your common sense and if you know the concept a little bit you can answer that question so when i say this this the idea of tolerance and the idea of minimum we always talk about something known as liebig's law of minimum presented by Liebig in 1840 it states the distribution of a species will be controlled by that environmental factor for which that organism has the narrowest range of tolerance because for the growth of every single biotic factors as we saw in the last picture the growth of every single biotic factor depends on the abiotic factor so growth of a human being if you take it depends on the air like how much oxygen present in the air if the oxygen content gradually decreases, then we cannot survive in most of the animals cannot survive it also depends on the ph it also depends on the water content that is present in that environment so those living creatures constantly require those inanimate things or, or you know, uh, the abiotic factors for their survival in the environment.